Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. I just made a video for my weather and nature page concerning the sky, the nighttime sky for the month of January, upcoming events. And I used a lot of images from the Heavenly Backyard telescopes. And well, I tell you what, it, it, it's so good, I want you to see it as well. So sit back and enjoy what's coming up in the January skies from Heavenly Backyard Astronomy at the southwest evening sky. Have you been noticing that bright star in the southwest? Well, it actually is not a star. It is the planet Venus. And another object just to the upper left of that, a duller yellow, not nearly as bright, but that's not a star either. That's the planet Saturn. Now keep a watch on these two as Venus climbs higher and higher in the evening sky while Saturn will be sinking lower toward the horizon. Now, on the evenings of January 16th and 17th, they will be side by side in appearance, but Saturn will be nearly a billion miles beyond Venus, but they're gonna look really close to each other up in the evening sky, particularly on the nights of January 16th and 17th, or the evening hours anyway. Uh, on the other side of the sky dome are Jupiter and Mars. Again, not stars, but very bright objects. Currently, Jupiter is the fourth brightest object up in the sky, only to be outshone by the sun, moon, and Venus. Now, just to the left, is the planet Mars shining as a ruddy red object and is currently the fifth brightest object up in the sky. So in order of brightness, you have uh, the Sun, Moon, Venus, Jupiter, and Mars. By the way, these are all brighter than the brightest stars up in the sky. And the brightest star is not the North Star, not Polaris. It is actually Sirius in the constellation Canis Major or the greater dog. Uh, in, in case you're wondering, the North Star Polaris ranks 48th in stellar brightness. So Sirius is the brightest star. And then there's a lot of other bright stars nearby. I'm going to talk about those in just a minute. But let's talk a little bit more about Mars because Mars is going to be dominating the uh, January sky as it becomes closer and closer to the Earth for this orbital period uh, of Mars. Now, the opposition of Mars will be on January 16th, uh, the same night as uh, Saturn and Venus will be appearing side by side in the sky. Anyway, on the other side of the sky, uh, Mars will be 59.7 million miles away. So that's enough about Mars. Let's go to nearby in the constellation Orion. Besides the planet, the winter nighttime sky is full of wonderful constellations asterisms, and nebulae. Now, the Pleiades, I talked about that in one of my videos earlier, uh, is also known as the Seven Sisters, and it's a beautiful bluish nebula high overhead just before midnight in early January. And nearby is one of everybody's favorite constellations, Orion the Hunter. Now, Orion consists of some of the brightest stars in the winter nighttime sky. The red giant Betelgeuse is the upper left shoulder of the giant, and this star, by the way, is expected to explode as a supernova soon, or, well, sometime in the next 3,000 years, but astronomically, that's soon, that's very soon. But when it does, we would be able to see it in the daytime sky for a while. And, and don't worry, if it does explode soon, uh, its distance of 548 light years is far, far enough away to not endanger us. But it would give us a spectacular view when it does explode. Anyway, part of Orion is the belt consisting of three bright stars in a line. And these stars carry the name of Alnitak, Alnilim, and Mintaka. <laughs> Just uh, to the left of Alnitak is an iconic nebula called the Horsehead Nebula, a, a, a dust cloud obscuring the red emitted light, which is shaped like that of a, well, head of a horse. Next to it is the Flame Nebula, which, well, looks like a flame of sorts. These two nebulae are about 1,500 light years away. What is a light year? A light year uh, is the distance that light traveling at 186,000 miles per second takes to travel over the course of one year, several trillion trillions of miles. All right. Uh, the Sword of Orion contains one of the most beautiful nebula of the nighttime sky, the Orion Nebula. This is an area of new star birth 
and it's about 1,344 light years away. It is a beautiful object viewing through binoculars or a small telescope. Nearby to Orion is the unicorn, also known as Monoceros. Monoceros contains many clusters and nebulae, and most notable among them are several. The Rosette Nebula, one of my favorites, the Rosette Nebula, is somewhat, uh, somewhat bright in a telescope, and it does look, well, it looks like a rose. It is about 4,900 light years away, so much further away than the Orion Nebula. And uh, it, within it, its core is a cluster of stars, and these are all new star births ongoing in the Rosette Nebula. To the upper left is the Christmas tree cluster, named for its resemblance to that of a Christmas tree. And it is somewhat bright looking through a telescope, and it is about 2,400 light years from Earth. Within it is the Cone Nebula, and is quite notable in this image as a dark conic structure. Now, just to the lower right of that, what looks somewhat like a comet is actually another nebula. It's called Hubble's Variable Nebula. Uh, it is a nebula of about, again, 2,500 light years from Earth, and it's named after Edwin Hubble. Now, this nebula and its illuminating star are very early stage planetary systems in development. Besides the nighttime sky, a notable astronomical event will occur on January 4th. The Earth will be at perihelion with the sun, our closest distance to the sun for the year at a distance of 91.4 million miles, as compared to a half year later in early July when we're at aphelion at a distance of 94.5 million miles. Now the average sun-earth distance is just shy of 93 million miles. Now even though we are closer to the sun right now, we are in winter here in the northern hemisphere. That's because the rays of the sun are glancing the northern hemisphere while the southern hemisphere is in their summer seasons as of this time. Well, there you have it, a view of what's coming up in the nighttime sky. Now, I took a lot of those pictures. I took all those pictures from the Heavenly Backyard, and I'm working on a video right now for th this channel here, the Astronomy Channel, on how I did this with the uh, uh, Nina and in uh, uh, Pixin site, how I took these uh, small field of view and made these large mosaic pictures. And I did that with Pixin site again, and the new Pixin site, 19. 19.1, the uh, Lockhart, I think it's called, uh, edition of Pix and Sights. Got some new features in there. Uh, I'll be showing you that as well. Uh, but anyway, thanks for all those who have been supporting my channel. I really appreciate that. And if you would like to continue your support, you could join the channel or you could uh, uh, give me a super set. Thanks. I like those. Uh, who wouldn't? <laughs> anyway, I appreciate all those who have given me uh, those super thanks. And I'm, I'm coming up with this next video very shortly. Uh, I just have it. Well, you saw some of the images already from it. I got the California Nebula, one of the other uh, images I used as a mosaic, uh, and, and that picture of the uh, Rosette Cluster, uh, that was four different pictures I mosaic together in Pixinsight after recording uh, them in Nina. So all that coming up. So thanks for, again for watching, and I'll see you later. Clear skies, everyone.